Are you bored in the house and in the house bored? Are you bored and in the house bored? Tired of wearing your same old sweatpants and that free t-shirt you got from school? Trying to impress all your friends on that Zoom call? Well, good news. We made a ton of forward merch and nobody showed up. Big yikes. Everything must go and everything looks great. Like this retro keyboard crew. Proven to increase internet speeds. Or the reimagined yellow tea. Perfect for the couch or the kitchen. Or the couch again. Did you forget about Windows XP? We didn't. Pay respect to that computer in your parents' basement. And get a load of this. A good vibes tea. No way you'll fail the vibe check on this one. And hot off the press. Hand dyed tie dye sweatsuits. Any and all of these pieces can be yours for a full retail price at forwardconference.org. Still not sold? Check this out. With any purchase over $100, you'll get a free moving forward face mask while supplies last. That's right, folks. A free mask. Hey, 2020, huh? Anyways, go to www.forwardconference.org or the Forward Reimagined app and order your forward merch today. Reimagine your closet. What's up, Forward 2020? How you guys doing? What's going on? What's going on? Come on, my name is Jake. Oh, and I'm Jake. And we are going to be your hosts all week. We've got some friends here live in studio with us. We want to show you our friends. Come on, they are awesome. They're going wild. They're going crazy. We know that you should be too. What we want to do real quick when we start out, we want to give some birthday shout outs to those. It's very special we day. Shout out real Come quick. on, Who's we have on Tori list? Thurston, Emma Spitznagel, Elizabeth Rhodes, Baron Brox, Mal Levert. Happy birthday. We love you. Mal. Thank you so much for joining Forward 2020 Reimagine. Come on, this is a different year, but it's an exciting year. But we've got three rules for Forward Reimagine. Jake, what's the first rule? The first rule is pass the vibe. We want you guys to interact with the chats, but make sure you keep it clean. We don't want to have to kick you out. We know you guys can do it. Come on. The second one is blow up the chat. Chat about anything and everything. We want to chat about your tribe. We want to chat about the message. We want to chat about worship. Anything and everything. Blow up the chat. The last rule, so simple. All you have to do is like and subscribe to the chat. That's all you have to do. Speaking of the chat, this is what we want you to do. We want to start chatting now. If it's your birthday, chat in the chat. If you're, We want you to chat your tribe name. We want you to chat where you're watching from. We're going to interact with you live right now. So start chatting it up so we can interact with some people. Come on, look at all these people chatting, Jake. This is amazing. Come on. Man, they are flowing it, man. We got people, Saints. Saints is hitting it up right now. We got Hustle. Saints from Philadelphia. Let's go. We got High Anna key. from High Key. That's oh, represent Tribe. let's High go. Key Pastor right here. Blake is in there. We see that. Oh, man, it is moving fast. Come on, it's Valentina Stewart. It's her birthday. Come on, happy birthday, Valentina. I see you in there, Bryce. Talking about hitting it. We're doing Yee. this thing, man. Look at these vibes, Saints. Yeah, come on. Everyone is hype right now. We got people watching from Texas. Let's go. Where, where are you watching from? Put in the chat right now where you're watching from. We want to see all over the globe. We've got pe people watching for Reimagine. Where are you watching from? Louisiana, Gainesville, Georgia. Let's go. Let's keep going. I think I saw the UK in there. That's amazing. All this the way is overseas. Good all the way. Oh, come on. I think from Miami, Miami. Let's go. We also saw that someone's watching from South Africa. This is a global thing, everybody. This is so exciting. And if you've never been to Forward Conference before, we do something special. It's called Tribe Wars. Tribe Wars. The one of the best parts of Forward Conference right here. We are hyped up for Tribe Wars. Crown, are you guys hyped up for Tribe Wars? Y'all ready for it? Come on. Y'all need to get it? ready for Tribe Wars. Check out this video. We about Let's to go. go. What's up, Forward Reimagine? I am Timmy Junction. 
And I am Tito Jackson. And we are going to be your Tribe War hosts all week long. Indeed, indeed. So, first thing we want to do, we just want to start off with our tribe names. If you're not familiar with it, we have our Tribe High Key. Woo. We got Tribe Hustler, like me. Hustle, hustle. And we got the Saints in here, and we got the Vibes in here. They got some good vibes here this year, sure. huh? Hey, why don't you go ahead and tell us real quick how they can earn some points. There's some ways you can earn points. This is number one, is you can interact in the chat back. Chat, uh, there we go. I'll get my words right. Let's get it together. Let's, let's redo that one again. Say that again one more time. You can interact. Uh, you can interact in the chat box. There we go. Make sure there we you go. chat about your tribe, chat your tribe names. We will give you points for your interaction. Number two is we will give you points for your social media posts. Indeed. Make sure that you like, make sure that you comment, and make sure that you hashtag forward and then your tribe name. Make sure you do that because that's a big way to win points. But the number one way you can win tribal wars is, is through forward quest. Forward quest. Forward quest. Quest. Forward Quest is yes. the number one way you can win Tribe Wars. Tell us about how and what you will win this year. Okay, okay, okay. We ain't really never done nothing like this before. This uh -uh. is something new right here. So, fourth place winner for your youth group ministry, your, your tribe, whatever tribe you're representing, you can win $500. $500. $500. That's some cheddar. That, 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 that's some money in your pocket. You can move. You can walk around a little bit there in your pocket. Third place winning, you'll win one thousand dollars. One thousand. Now you're starting to look real good, but we're gonna, we're gonna just take it up a little bit more. A little more. If you win second place, you can get twenty five hundred dollars. Say that again. Twenty five hundred dollars. Hundred. Hundred dollars. Come on. But see, they ain't the best part, mm -mm. Timmy. They ain't the best part right here. Make it rain on them, baby. First place, you can get five. Five thousand thousand dollars dollars five thousand blue faces. That, that, that's all the money I make right there. Ooh, come on! I'm liking that right there. So, if you want to win this, please make sure you're interacting in the chat, the pull request, all that other good stuff. We will give you points, and we will select a youth group out of the winning tribe to give the winning money to. Come on, that's high stakes. So let's make sure we we, we start. We're gonna have our first game today. We're starting right okay, now. Okay, okay. Let, let, let me. Let, what's the first game right here? Because you know I am a champion right you here. You are a champion. You're I, a two-time champion. Two-time champion right here. What's two the key to success? A, you gotta grind. Keyword hustle, and you gotta be a Ooh. saint like me. Ooh. And hockey, you gotta keep your limit up here. Distance yourself from certain people and then keep the vibes there. Chill That's good. Face. Come on. You see how we integrated all the names? We're going to jump to our first game. It's good. It's called Inverted Volleyball. Inverted Volleyball. There's two players from each tribe that will be battling it out outside. It's going to be absolutely amazing. They will have to spike the ball down across the trampoline to the other side. And the first team to nine points, not 10 points, not nah. 11, not eight, nine points wins. Okay, okay, so let, let, let's go and jump into this. Cameron, 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 are, are you there? We, we, yeah, right, there right, you are. Yes, and as you can see, we are here, uh, and the teams are ready to play. They have been prepared. Let's meet our teams, and, and let's see some strategy what's going on here. As we can see, we're here with Tribe Hustle. Uh, who do we have for this tribe? Uh, I'm Caleb. Caleb, nice to meet you. And who, who are you? Faith. Faith. All right. Well, what is your strategy? Caleb, as you're coming into this game, what are you thinking? You see, when I was a kid, my grandfather, he told me whenever you're going to enter a competition, you got that, to that looks like the, that's going to be a lot. I, we don't have time for that. I'm so faith. What, what, what about you? What about you? I figure if we get more points than them, then we're good. That's that's all we're doing here. Uh, that, that's pretty logical. Yeah, that's 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 what we need right there. That's that's great. Let's go over to the tribe vibes here. Who do we have here? Akia. Akia and Connor dudes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Connor, what are you thinking as you're coming into this game? Where's your mind? You know, my mind's mainly on my surfboard because they took it and told me I had to compete in this to get it back. So I'm going to try to win and get it back, you know? Very inspirational. Skateboards. All right. Akia, what about you? Man, I'm just here. I'm one with the sun. I'm just keeping it groovy. That's it. Groovy. I love the vibes. Yeah, so as you can see, we're here for uh, for skateboards, trying to win it back. We're here for vibes. Hopefully somebody's grandfather will be impressed. I don't know, but let's see how this game is going to go. We're about to go under away real soon. Team, are you ready? Yeah. Team, are you ready? Ready! Yeah. A lot of energy from Hustle. They're going to do great. Yeah. Yeah. 
Ooh, all right. First point goes the vibes. Fun fact about inverted volleyball is that it was created by the Vikings in Iceland. Mm, interesting. Ooh, that looked like it was quite painful there. <laughs> Let's take a closer look at that one, Tito. Wow, look at the way it ricocheted right into her face. Slow motion is beautiful. Swing and a miss from Faith. If they don't do something soon, they gonna be out of the game. Ooh, that one fell short. That was very controversial. That last play, it, it felt like that was the other team's point. What, what are you thinking? My game, my rules. Okay, all right, we're gonna continue on. His game, his rules, people. Let's, let's continue. The man is right. His game, his rules. Yeah, that, that's sound logic. from Caleb. He may have kept him in the game. Ooh, that's a double thing. That should have definitely gone to hustle. Score is fixed. It's 3-3. Three, three. That's another double bounce on vibes. They really need to stop doing that. Wow, Faith is really giving it her all. Ooh, that point goes to vibes. Up and out. Two arrows in a row for Caleb. His grandfather must be ashamed. Indeed. Oops, looks like Vibes made a mistake. It seems when Vibes makes a mistake, Hustle scores. over the net again. He really misses that surfboard. Oh, this all tied up. This is quite the game. Ooh, great save from Caleb. The teams are starting to gel. Ooh, out of bounds. That's a point for vibes. The rip almost got caught up in that one now. Another double bounce and a sad whistle from the ref. Ooh, up and over, no saving that. Tito, this is game point for vibes. If Vibe gets the next point, they win. Oh my, oh my, it's all tied up. Game point. Winner takes all, winner takes all. You ready? Can we let hands on the ball? You ready? No. Okay. Here we go. Timmy, have you ever had gas station sushi? Yeah. I cannot say that I have, Tito. It would change your life. Mm -mm -mm. Sounds like it'll give me the bubble guts, but we should probably keep an eye on the game. Another double bouncing vibe. Winner! Ooh. Hustle with their first win. All right, exciting, exciting game. We have the winner, Team Hustle. Now, wow, you, you guys were down for a, a lot, and then you just came out of nowhere. Like, how, how did y'all do that? What was going on? Well, it's kind of like what my grandpa told me when we went fishing. Your grandpa, I guess, is too long. We, we, we have only faith. What about you? There was a hit that went on early in the game, and it's, it's kind of nasty. You know what? Let's go back to that. Can we go back and, and play that? Ooh. Yeah, that was that wasn't that's pretty ugly what was going on through your mind walk me through that well you know what they say a righteous man falls seven times but gets back up eight. Oh, oh come on Woo! Woo! 
That's good. That's that. Wow. That is what we're talking about. That's what makes winners right there. Back to you in the desk. Wow. Come on, Tito. Hustle what one. A that game is a game right wow. there. Down to the wire. Cannot believe it. Hustle, you get two million points for your try. Two million on the two, things. Two mil. Two mil. Come Put on, let's mil. go, Hustle. We're going to see. You can see the live scoreboard behind us. Try Saints one million points earlier million. from Instagram. Instagram. And you can also get that too. High key and vibes if you interact in the chats. But you also want to win some tribe wars as well. Let's give them a chance. Get in the chat right now. Start, tri- uh, start chatting your tribe name. We will start handing out points right now. Go in the chat. Start tri- chatting your names. Let's start giving out. I'm going to give 100,000 points to Vibes because they're in the chat right but, now. But that's not right. Let's give 100,000 to Hockey as well, We're too. Hundred- and 100,000 to Saints. I and see them represent. We're nice. We're nice people right here. Everybody walked away with something at the end of the day. Awesome. Well, we love you guys. We will be with you all week with Tribe Wars. We can't wait to see who wins. Amazing man, Tito and Timmy really got it going on, huh? They, they got a special bond, a special relationship. I think we, me and you need to have that same Come on. relationship. Let's bring it in, bring it in as mm. one. Come on, like well, we're that. excited for that. About. Like Tito and Timmy said, one of the best ways that you can win points in Tribe Wars is Forward Quest. Really, it's the biggest way that you can win prizes. So check out this video and check out Forward Quest Forward 2020. Forward Quest is back. It's Forward's very own digital scavenger hunt that you play with your phone. Stay tuned at the very end of this session and you'll get a clue. And then it's off to the races to see who can find all the pieces first. Play by yourself or you can join up with your friends or youth group to figure things out faster. Forward Quest gets you massive points for your tribe. You get 10,000 tribe points for every person from your tribe that completes the stage. And the person who finishes the stage first gets 1 million points for their tribe. Plus a prize pack which includes two tickets to Forward 2021 a personal shout-out in conference and on Instagram, this merch, and a six-inch Subway meatball marinara sandwich. You just need two things to play. Follow at ForwardCon on Instagram and download the Forward app. Clues will be on both, so get them now. Get your team ready, get your brain ready, and check after this session to play Forward Quest. Come on! Well, we want to make sure that you follow us on Instagram at Forward Con, or you can download the app for Conference 2020. This is how you can play Forward Quest. We actually have one of the prizes in the building right now. Ooh, Look at this six inch. What is this right Ooh, Give here. that a smell. Tell me how that smells. Delicioso. Ooh, we're hey. going to call somebody up in the yeah, crowd to come take Jordan, a bite Jordan, of this. Come here real quick. Come this here. is Jordan, everyone. Let's give it up for Jordan. Give it up for him. Take, take a take bite. A bite of this real quick and just t- the tell The mana from heaven. Like. This is what you can win at Forward Quest. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, wow. We oh, said wow. one bite. We didn't say we make said, out with yeah, it. Okay, yeah. here we go. Take that back to your just, seat. Let's give that up for it, yeah. Jordan. Come on. And he is single and ready to mingle. All right. Well, we are excited for four requests, and we've got some other things going on here that we want to tell you about. Yes, exactly. We have our free chapel college here. I'm actually a graduate student here myself. It's probably one of the best colleges that you ever want to go to. I'm telling you, it would change your life. It changed my life for sure. Why don't you check out this video right here? Your future isn't defined by your present. It's defined by the creator of the universe. And his plan is bigger than anything you can imagine. This is a call for leaders. A call for creatives. A call for musicians, artists, and speakers. For pastors, youth leaders, designers, and so much more. This is Free Chapel College, now on the East and West Coast. Find your future with hands-on experience in worship arts, creative media, and pastoral leadership with students from across the country. This isn't college like you've seen before. This is Free Chapel College. Come on. Well, if you are interested in Free Chapel College, we want to put information in your hands. You can text FCC Info 
to 313131. We have a team waiting to put information in your hands about Free Chapel College. You know what the best part of Free Chapel College is? What's the best part? Surprise me. It's not just on the East Coast, but it's on the West Coast, too. We West have Free side. Chapel College in Orange County, California. So no matter where you live, in America or around the world, we would love to have you at one of our campuses at Free Chapel College. But this is what we need to do. We need you to get up and stand up wherever you're watching this. Get some room, though. Get Stretch some room. Stretch out a little bit. Stretch a little bit. Lift up your hands. Because Forward Reimagine 2020 is about to begin. So we want to stand yes, up. Yes, yes. We want to get in the chat. Get excited because it's about to go down. Are you ready for the Forward 2020 opener? Let's go. Here we Let's go. go. I think the whole world's addicted to the drama. Only attracted to the things that bring a trauma. Overseas, yeah, we're trying to stop terrorism. But we still got terrorists here living. In the USA, the big CIA, the bloods and the crypts and the KKK. But if you only have love for your own race, then you only leave space to discriminate. And to discriminate only generates hate. And when you hate, then you're bound to get irate. Yeah, man, this is what you demonstrate. And that's exactly how anger works and operates. Man, you gotta have love and set it all straight. Take control of your mind and meditate. Let your soul gravitate to the love, y'all. The world on my shoulder as I'm getting older, y'all People get colder Most of us only care about money making Selfishness got us following the wrong direction Wrong information always shown by the media Negative images is a main criteria Infecting the young minds, president bacteria Kids wanna act like what they see in the cinema yeah. Whatever happened to the values of humanity Whatever happened to the fairness and equality Instead of spreading love and spreading animosity Lack of understanding leading us away from unity that's the reason why sometimes I'm feeling under That's the reason why sometimes I'm feeling down It's no other why sometimes I'm feeling under Gotta keep my faith for Pretentious slogans and goals. I'm sick of your fundraising schemes, your public relation and image making. I've had all I can take of your noisy ego music. When was the last time you sang to me? Do you know what I want? I want justice. Oceans of it. I want fairness. Rivers of it. That's what I want. That's all. Praise and 
treasures of faith are never enough. You came along and you put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied.
wherever you are right now, I just want you to lift your hands and take a moment, whether you're with your youth group, you're at your house, you're in your room, wherever you may be, I believe that God is actually meeting you there right now. The Holy Spirit is omnipresent. That means he's everywhere and he's anywhere. And God is speaking and filling us right now. God, we just lift you up. I thank you. I thank you that you're healing those who have a broken heart. You're mending the brokenhearted. You're healing hearts and minds and spirits right now. You're bringing people back together. There's going to be a bond back together, a unity. And God, we just stand and we worship you. Though we're not, we may not be together in the same room, unity, together we are worshiping you all over the world and we are lifting you up and saying, God, we need you. We are available for your call. We thank you. We thank you for that you're so good and that you're so gracious. God, you are amazing. And we lift you up this evening. We thank you in your mighty, mighty name. Amen. Come on, can we just put Amen. our hands together? So good, so good. God is so good. Come on, well, we are so excited for our first session of Forward Reimagine. This is what we need you to do. We need you to pull out a notepad or pull out your phone, get ready to take notes, because I promise you this speaker that we have tonight is going to blow you away. Who do we have speaking tonight? Oh, he's part of our Forward family right here, coming all the way live from Miami, Vu Church, Pastor Rich Wilkerson Jr. Come Ladies on, let's give, give it up, up for, for Pastor him. Rich. Well, come on, how are we doing, Forward Conference? My name is Rich Wilkerson, Jr., and I pastor Vu Church in Miami. And what an honor, what a privilege it is for me to get to come and speak to you at Forward Conference Reimagine 2020. Now, I know, I know, I know, this is how most of you did not plan on going to Forward Conference. I know, I know, I know, you were hoping to be in the arena, you were hoping to see your friends, you were hoping to be touching people, singing loud, opening up God's Word, but just because you didn't plan on it being this way doesn't mean that God ever stopped having a plan. In fact, many times we get disappointed. I think sometimes it doesn't go how we planned it, but it ends up turning out better than we expected it. And I'm even just believing right now with Forward Conference 2020 reimagined that by the way of technology and coming to you virtually through streams, that we're going to see more people impacted with the gospel. We're going to see more students equipped in their faith to walk out their faith in their everyday life. And I just got to be honest with you. I'm just, I'm so honored to be a part of it. I've been coming to Forward Conference for many, many years. I have so many good memories, but something tells me that 2020 is going to be the year that we're never, ever going to forget Forward Conference. And I want to thank uh, one of the men in my life who has been a faithful mentor, a faithful voice, and that is Pastor Jensen Franklin. Can we make a little bit of noise? Come on. For Pastor Jensen and Sharice, we love you guys. Everyone there at Free Chapel. Uh, the team, Connor, man, we're, we're just, we're so, so grateful for the way that you guys live your life, the leadership. Thank you for many, many years creating a space that, that students could come and encounter Jesus, but then be encouraged and motivated to walk out their faith. And just believing that throughout this conference, that God's speaking to people and that God's going to use his word to encourage you. I, I live in Miami, as I told you, and I pastor a church called VU. And uh, we started our church close to five years ago. And just like you, this pandemic has made us stop a little bit. We haven't been gathering physically for many months. But I got to be honest with you. I've heard so many stories. I continue to see the hand of God and the grace of God working in our community. And I believe that God has big plans. I believe that a great awakening is coming. And I believe the best really is yet to come for your life, but also for the church of Jesus Christ. And today, I want to just take a few moments. Uh, I, I want to speak. If you've got a Bible, I just want to read a verse. And then I've got more of a teaching today that I want to give you. But I believe it's precise. I never shared it with anyone before. I think it's just for you. Joshua chapter 1, verse 6. Joshua is getting ready to take over for Moses. Meaning he's a young leader. And he's getting prepared to step into some big shoes. I know sometimes being a teenager, it can be scary. Sometimes being a teenager, some of you just graduated from high school. Some of you getting ready to go to college. Maybe some of you right now, you're getting ready to step into high school. Maybe you're going into your summer and you're getting ready to step into your sophomore year or your junior year. And maybe you're afraid that maybe you're saying, I don't know how to step in. I don't know how to transition into this next season. I'm afraid. Well, I just want to zero in on Joshua because that's what he's about to do right now. He's about to transition into a new assignment. 
He's transitioning to take over from Moses. He's becoming a leader. And as you read Joshua chapter 1, it becomes very clear that he must be afraid on the inside. Because over and over again, God speaks to Joshua. And this is what he says. Joshua chapter 1 verse 6. Not one time, but many times. God says, be strong and courageous. Because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers. To give them. Be strong and very courageous. Come on, right there in the chats. Somebody just say, very courageous. Come on, the amen. Right, very courageous. Just very, God's calling you to be very courageous. It says, be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Watch this. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And this is a word straight from heaven to your heart today. I know it's been a tough year. I know it's been a difficult year. I know it's been a disappointing year. I know it's been a challenging year. But I want to remind you that the word of the Lord, the same thing he said to Joshua, is the same thing he's saying to you today. Be strong and very courageous. Open up God's word. Get a promise from heaven. Don't start doubting now. Because if you put God first, you're never going to come in second. You're going to find yourself walking into the plans of God. Come on. If you believe it, somebody make a little bit of noise out there. If you know that I'm preaching to you today. And I just want to take a few moments just speaking to young leaders, speaking to students today. I'm 36 years of age now. I can't believe it. This outfit I got on, I think I'm too old to be wearing stuff like this. I'm 36. But I took some time this week and, and, and I tried to put myself back in your shoes try to talk to myself being the 16 year old rich who was afraid who was discouraged who was insecure who dealt with peer pressure I just have a really simple talk I just I want you to get your notepad out right now get get your bible out right now I just want to give you five things here we go five things I wish I knew at 16 just five things that I wish I knew at 16. I just want to give you five. We're going to jump right into this because right now, this time that you are living in, it is vital that you learn some stuff, that you know some stuff. Listen, faith is always easiest to see in retrospect. Meaning like when I start looking back on my life, it's easy to connect the dots. But faith is not about looking backwards. Faith is about looking forwards. And so often we look back on our life. I say, oh, man, I just wish I would have known. I wish I would have known that. I want to give you five things that I wish I knew at 16. Those of you that are discouraged today, those of you that are going, how did all this happen? What's going on with the state of our nation right now? Five things I wish I knew when I was 16. Number one, here we go. Age will not keep you from being used by God, but immaturity will. This is so important. Age will not keep you from being used by God, but immaturity will. I wish I knew at 16 that God was ready to use me, not in a small way, but in a significant way. I I, I wish I would have had a deeper revelation that the moment that I was saved, I was also coupled with salvation, with a calling from God. But so often what happened in my life at 16 is I wasted those years. Let me just tell you right now, at 16 years of age, at 15 years of age, if you have a pulse today, you have a purpose. God is no respecter of age. And I want to encourage some people right now, a forward conference. I want you to know today that God wants to use you. God has a plan for you. God wants to use your life. He has significance wrapped up. He has plans to prosper you, plans to give you a hope, plans to give you a future. Your age does not disqualify you from being used, but rather your immaturity does. What is the difference between immaturity and maturity? Well, immaturity is simply when I'm self-absorbed and maturity begins to happen when I become others absorbed, when I become able to see from other people's perspective. 
It was the apostle Paul who said, when I was a child, I thought like a child. I, 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 I reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. He's not just speaking about being a kid. He's talking about a mindset of maturity that we step into. Truth of the matter is, I know 40-year-old people that act pretty childish. I know 50-year-old people that still have not stepped into maturity. And because of it, they never step into the fullness of what God has for them. And if I could just get in the room with you right now. I don't know if you're watching in your home. I don't know if you're watching by way of laptop or on your TV. I don't want you to waste one more second stepping into the calling that God has for your life. You see, for me, it wasn't until I was 17 years of age that I had a true, authentic encounter with God. Something happened at 17 that I, I just wish it could have happened at 16. I think it could have happened at 15. I'm pretty sure it could have started at 14. But my immaturity, the fact that I was simply focused on me, myself, and I, the, the fact that I wasn't thinking about how God could use me, I wasted so many precious years that I could have been living on purpose rather than on accident. I wonder, in fact, right now, if you're in the chat, just, just, just say that. Live on purpose. Don't live on accident. <laughs> I think many times this is what happens to us. is rather than live by design, we live by default. You go all throughout the Bible. God does. He, God calls old men. You know, he called Abraham at 75 years of age. He gave Abraham a promise at 75. He said, you're going to be the father of many nations. Here's the deal. When God gives you a promise, he always couples that with a problem. <laughs> Because the problem is going to require your faith. You can't stand in fear. You actually have to face the problem with faith. Abraham, at 75 years of age, gets a promise. But guess what? That promise isn't fulfilled until he's 99, until he's 100 years of age. And you're, that's not just crazy. That's nasty. Come on, Forward Conference. 100-year-old people having babies, bro. But this is the God that we serve, that God says, if I give you a promise, I don't care if, you're too, if you look too old. I don't care if you look too young. If you will step out in faith, if you will recognize the promise isn't just about you, but rather the promise is about God and other people, he will use you. Come on, somebody. I wish I would have known. I wish I would have known. I didn't have to live in fear. I wish I would have known that at 16, I could be used by God. You don't have to start your prayer life when you get into your, your 20s. You don't have to start living for Jesus radically when you turn 30. No, God wants to use you right now, today. Age will not keep you from being used by God, but immaturity will. Number two, I wish I would have known when I was 16 that you don't rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. I want to say it again. I wish I would have known at 16 that you don't rise to the level of your goals, but rather you fall to the level of your systems. What does this mean? This means when I was 16 years of age, I was dreaming about all sorts of stuff. I had all sorts of ambitions and I had all sorts of vision and I had all sorts of desires in my heart. But what I've learned as I've gotten older is that winners and losers typically have the same goal. I mean, anybody who typically goes out onto the athletic field to play a football game both teams want to win. Yet then there's some teams that consistently win. Is it because they had a bigger goal than the other team? No, no, no. It's because they had better systems. Yeah. What are systems? Systems are habits. Systems are process. Systems are accountability. Things that we put into our life that help us fulfill the dreams and the desires, the goals and the objectives. I, I really believe right now that you need to start creating systems and habits in your life. You don't want to just go through life going through the motions. You want to make sure that you're systematically creating uh, accountability structures around you that are going to help put you into motion to fulfill the things that you dream about. Let me give you an example. Um, you know, Pastor Jensen, uh, he, he has given so much revelation to the body of Christ around the category of fasting. Now, I don't know if you know what fasting is. And you're like, all I know is uh, breakfast. Yeah, that's in the morning that you just break the fast. But, but fasting is a spiritual discipline where you deny your flesh of food in order to feel, feed your spiritual man or your spiritual woman, your soul, that you might connect in a higher way with God, that you might turn down the noise of the world, that you might 
turn up the volume of your spirit. Yeah. Pastor Jensen's given beautiful revelation to the body of Christ around the topic of fasting. And I believe in fasting. And I fast sometimes multiple times throughout the year, but not always multiple times, but always definitely two times out of the year. But I gotta be honest with you. There has never, ever been a moment that I felt like fasting. In fact, if I'm really being honest with you, and if I would just talk as a normal man from my flesh, I don't like fasting. I've never woken up in the morning and be like, oh my goodness, you know what I want to do? I don't want to eat today. Nobody wakes up that way. But what I've had to do in my life in order, because I have this belief in this goal that I think fasting is going to produce a result in me. I think fasting is needed for my spiritual walk. I have to have the goal, but then I have to attach it to a system, to a process, to discipline, to accountability. So how do I do that in my life? Well, at Vu Church, twice a year, we have a season of fasting. It happens in January, the first 21 days of the year. And all of a sudden it happens again in August as we step into our vision season of the year in September. So check, check this out. This is how it goes down. Every January, it's December. The holidays are going big. I'm doing presents. New Year's Eve. Yo, what's up? It's your boy, Rich. Having a good time, having a celebration. And I'm telling you, every year I wake up January 1st, I don't feel like fasting but I have a goal. I have a vision to fast, but now because I've attached a system around it, I've gotten up in front of our community. Our community has said that we're going to fast together. Now, as soon as I have that goal, when I wake up on January 1st, not feeling like it because I've attached a system to it. Now it doesn't matter what my feelings say. The system delivers the goal to me because I put accountability in my life. Come on, somebody. You got to get this today. I wish I would have known at 16, it wasn't just about dreaming and daydreaming, but it was actually about going, all right, God's put some big stuff in my heart, but how am I going to get there? I'm going to get there by proper systems, by having processes, by creating the right habits. Listen to me. The key to your success is wrapped up in your daily routine. Nobody uh, ruins their life like uh, just one decision. No, no, no. We ruin our life by making one small compromise at a time. And we drift from what God has for us. I wish I would have known at 16, man, that you don't just rise the level of your goal, but rather it, it's the systems that you create in your life. Number three, I want you to write this one down. This is very, very important. I wish I would have known at 16 that my family will outlast my friends. I wish I would have known that my family will outlast my friends. Right now in the chat, come on, put this in the chat. Put hashtag check your circle. Come on, amen corner. Show these guys down here. Come on, somebody say check your circle. Someone say check your circle. Check your circle. This is a simple little phrase that we use at Voo Church. And all it simply means is who is surrounding you in your life? Who are the circle of people that you have put around you? Because listen to me. The people that you put around you, I promise you, they're not becoming like you. You're becoming like them. Listen, let me just give you some revelation today. If you're the smartest person in your circle, you need a new circle. <laughs> we want to reach up. We want bigger, deeper, better relationships, better friends. Check your circle. Get the right people in your life. Get, get the right people. Alignment's more important than assignment. And when I was 16, I just, I thought way too much about the friends that are around me. And I'm not trying to disrespect your friends right now, but I did too many stupid things trying to please people when I was 16 years of age that now at 36, I don't know none of them. When I was 16, uh, I had these seven friends, these buddies of mine, and we all took shish kebab sticks and we put them in a fire and we branded our arm and we all had this scar and we said, the seven of us, we're going to be best friends forever. We bear the scar on our arm. Oh, to be 16 again. You know what's funny? I don't know any of those dudes. God bless them if they're watching right now. I don't even know them anymore. But I thought in that limited perspective, it's not that the people around you don't matter. It's not that people that are around you right now don't have value. They have immense value. I'm just saying, don't make decisions today that you're going to regret tomorrow for people that won't be with you in the future. Check your circle. Family will outlast your friends. Some of you are 
squandering some of the greatest moments you have with moms and dads, brothers and sisters. Maybe you're saying, but oh, but Rich, I, I, I don't have a healthy family home. I don't have a healthy natural family. Okay, you might not have a healthy family of origin, but this is the beautiful thing about the body of Christ. You have a thing called a family of choice that whatever we're missing in the natural, I believe the church, the body of Christ, your youth ministry, God's gonna begin to fill those spots, those gaps and replace it with people that you need. I just want you to know today, I just want you to hear me. I can just... I'm just giving you a teaching. I just wish I would have known this at 16. I paid way too much attention to people that would not matter in my future. Check your circle. I can just see Joshua. And it's like, I'm so afraid to transition. I'm so afraid to move forward. And God says, no, no, no. Be strong and very courageous. Get your focus on my word. And you watch. I'm going to lead you and I'm going to guide you. Number four on five things I wish I knew at 16. Number four, if it's not fun in the morning, it's not fun. (laughs) If it's not fun in the morning, it ain't fun. Listen, the scripture says sin is pleasurable for a season. So I understand it, man. Sex is fun. Getting high can be fun. Getting drunk can be fun. But you ask anybody who does those things, especially the first time, the second time, the third time, when they wake up in the morning, I don't care if they're a believer in Jesus or not. When they wake up in the morning, the feeling is guilt, shame, and remorse. And we pay too much attention to the temporary and we don't think about the eternal. And I just want to give you, I just wish I would have known at 16. I didn't have to hurt so many girls. I wish I would have known at 16, I didn't have to hurt my heart so much. I didn't have to warp my mindset so much. I didn't have to lower my standards so much. I I wish I would have known at 16, I didn't have to lie to my parents that many times. I didn't have to project something that I wasn't. I wish I knew at 16 that if it's not fun in the morning, it just simply isn't fun. Don't take the bait. (laughs) This is why Paul writes to a young Timothy And he says, flee youthful desires. Flee sexual immorality. It's not just what you're running from. It's what you're running to. I'm not just telling you, no, no, no. Don't, 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 don't. I'm telling you that God has something better in store for you. I don't just want to run from sin. I want to run to the arms of Jesus. Why? Because sin is pleasurable for a season, but Jesus is satisfying forever. Jesus is satisfying forever. And I just wish I would have known at 16. Didn't matter how many girls I hooked up with. It was, I was still going to be empty. It didn't matter how many images I looked at, I, was, I would still be empty. It didn't matter how many times I got high, I was still going to have the same problems after the high wore off. I just wish I would have known at 16 that like, I didn't have to behave that way to that per- I didn't have to bully that person. I didn't have to project that thing that I was not. Because if it's not fun in the morning, then it's just not fun. I wish I would have known this at 16, but I was too afraid. I was too afraid. That which awaited me, I was, just, I was too afraid. I, was, I, didn't, I, I couldn't be me. I was, I, was, I was too afraid. But God says, be strong and very courageous. I am with you. Five things I wish I would have known when I was 16. Number one, age will not keep you from being used by God, but immaturity will. Number two, you don't rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. Number three, my family will outlast my friends. Number four, if it's not fun in the morning, it's not fun. And number five, Christianity is not called to convenience, but conviction. I wish I would have known at 16 that if I'm going to do this Jesus following stuff, it's not just going to lead me into easy days always. If I'm going to do this Jesus stuff, if I'm actually going to follow Jesus, that's what Christianity means. It's not even a word in the New Testament. Christianity originally meant the way that we would follow the one Jesus who said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. I wish I would have known that if I was going to sign up to take on that title, what that was going to mean in my life is, is that it wasn't going to always be convenient. But rather, I was going to have to be led out of conviction. 
And I plead with you today, in the same way that God spoke to Joshua, be strong and very courageous. I want to tell every one of you, 17 and 18 and 16 and 15 and 14 year olds, those of you that have said, I'm going to follow the way, I'm going to follow Jesus. I want you to know it doesn't always lead to mountaintops. Many times in order to get to the mountaintop, you got to go through the valley. Many times in order to get to the other side, you got to go through the storm. Many times in order to get to the blessing, you got to go through the burden. Many times in order to get to the glory, you got to go through suffering. And we need a generation that would rise up right now in this hour. That would live life unashamed, unafraid, unapologetic of the Jesus on the inside of them. That they would not lead out of their feelings, but they would lead out of faith. God, I'm scared. God, I'm afraid. But I have this quickening in my spirit. The Holy Spirit is moving me and he is pushing me into my purpose. And although I'm afraid and although I am discouraged, I hear the Lord say, be strong and very courageous. I wish I would have known at 16 that it wasn't just about playing video games on a Wednesday night in youth with my friends. And it wasn't just about going to the conference and getting numbers from the girls and hanging out late in the hotel room. All that stuff, yeah, that's fun. But I wish I would have known that this thing called following Jesus is gonna, it's gonna require everything. Jesus said, if you want to follow me, you must deny yourself. Pick up your cross. John the Baptist, the forerunner to Jesus, he said, he must become greater and I must become less. He must increase. I must decrease. What's he saying? He said, I'm not, I'm not here for convenience. I'm here for conviction. A forward conference reimagined. Let me just tell you right now, we have never needed now more than ever for young people to rise up and lift up their voice as Jesus followers. Listen to me. Crisis is the perfect opportunity for new leaders to emerge. America and our nation is in crisis. Sure, we're in a global pandemic, but man, over the last few weeks, we have all seen just how deep the sins and the soul of this nation are as racism has been caught on video cameras. This is not a political issue. Don't let anybody tell you that. This is an issue about human beings being oppressed and being held down. And the only way it's going to change is when the body of Christ, when a next generation stands up and says, no, I might take some heat to raise my voice against racism. But if I'm going to take heat about that, that just means anybody who's criticizing me obviously has got some racist tendencies. And I'm not called to convenience. I'm called to conviction. I'm called, like Proverbs says, to lift up my voice for those that do not have a voice. Friend, I'm telling you right now, your voice matters. That you can weigh in. That you can shout. That you can be loud. That you can let the world know. For God so loved the world. What is the world? It's all people. Black people and white people and everybody in between. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son in the world to condemn the world. He sent his son in the world to save the world. God loves the world. And if God loves the world, it means I love the world. And the world is not just some big thing. The world is the brother, the sister, the person right in front of you. The person you're following on Instagram. The person that's following you on Instagram. The person you love watching on TikTok. The person you walk through those high school hallways with. The person that you see in your neighborhood. The person that doesn't know everything about your life, but you see them in the lunchroom. That person is who God loves. The person who doesn't look like you. The person that doesn't believe like you. And I just wish I would have known at 16... If I was going to do this Jesus thing, if I was going to follow Jesus, I was going to have to be obedient to operate out of faith, which meant that I couldn't live my life out of convenience. I would have to live my life out of conviction. We need forward conference this year. We we need God to speak a word to us. Be strong and very courageous forward conference. Be strong and very courageous. Do, do Do not let this 
book of the law, the Bible, God's word. Don't, don't let it depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night. I wonder, are, are you consuming more social media than you are God's word? Are you watching more TikTok than you are God's word? That's going to produce fear. This is going to produce faith. So that you may be careful to do everything written, and then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Wherever you go, Jesus follower. Wherever you go, he goes with you. And we need a generation right now when the world gets loud about sin, the church gets loud about salvation. When the world <laughs> tries to put fear in us, we would, we would snap back with faith to say, no, I'm not going anywhere. I'm a person of conviction. You don't have to learn this at 36. You can, you can learn this right now at 16. Right now today, God wants to minister to you. We have a long way to go, each and every one of us. But I'll be the best days are in front of the church. It's in front of people like you and me. We can't do it alone, but together, through the Spirit of God, I believe that we can see incredible progress and we can see the name of Jesus lifted high and people respond to his grace. But we need a generation right now that walks boldly and courageously out of conviction from the Spirit. I'm not going to live a life of sin. I'm going to step into the righteousness and the grace that Jesus has for me. As you're watching this right now, wherever you're at in your home, on your mobile device, maybe you're in a watch party with your youth ministry, I love you so much. I believe in you so much. The enemy wants to tell you that you're already disqualified. Let me tell you what, you got so much life in front of you, it's it's crazy. (laughs) Every time the enemy brings up your past, you just remind him of his future. If he keeps pulling up your past, it's probably because he's running out of new material. There's great days in front of you. You got a long life in front of you, but you can start living on purpose right now, today. And that all begins with relationship with Jesus. That Jesus Christ, he came to this earth in the form of a man and he lived a spotless and sinless life. It was God in the flesh. And he who knew no sin became sin. Why? Because for the wages of sin is death, meaning my sin, my mistakes, my disqualifications, those things that I've done, the scripture says, because I've fallen from God's glory, that I will will receive death. But Jesus, full of grace and full of truth, he exposes our sin and he says, yeah, you got sin, but I also got grace for you. And so I expose your sin, but my grace exonerates your sin. And so Jesus says, I will die your death. And that's why they put him on a cross and they crucified him. They hung him high and they stretched him wide, nails in his hands and nails in his feet. And the last words that he declared out loud is he said, it is finished. What was finished? No longer would your sins hold you back. No longer would your sins determine your future, but rather through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, when you put your faith in his work because of it today, when God the Father looks down upon you, he doesn't see you for your sin. He doesn't see you for your mistakes. He doesn't see you for your shame, but rather he sees you for all of the good that Jesus did. Jesus is the propitiation, meaning he took the place of your sins. He he took your place. Died your death. And he resurrected from that grave so that you could live his life. Today, I don't know what your summer has in store for you, but if you really want to have a summer you'll never forget, if you really want to have a summer that's full of adventure and full of wonder, why not try putting Jesus first? And you watch where he takes you. I can't promise you that he's going to take you to a mountaintop tomorrow. He might take you into a storm. He might take you into a valley. He might take you into a desert. He might take you into a season of suffering. And it can be hard and it might be difficult. But listen to me loud and clear. Here's the best part. He will be with you every step of the way. And I would rather be in a valley with Jesus than on a mountaintop all by myself any day. Because if God is for us, who can be against us? Today, I want to give you a chance right there at your home. If you don't know Jesus, it's really simple. 
Scripture says in John chapter 1, yet to all who received him and believed in his name, he gave them the right to be called children of God. What's so cool about this thing called preaching is we just start proclaiming the story of Jesus. It's not really about me. It's actually about this message. I'm just a messenger right now. And so I already know. I know you're watching a screen. You might have been distracted about 30 minutes ago, but somehow as I started opening up my mouth, just that name, there's power in that name. Something started to shift in your home and something's even going on in the inside. You're like, what is that? I feel this. It's called the conviction of the Holy Spirit. You're not called to live out of convenience. You're not called to live out of feelings. You're called to live out of faith. You were designed to worship him. You were designed to be in relationship with him. And he's wooing you in. Even at 14 and 15 and 16 years of age, he's saying your purpose starts now. It starts now. So you simply receive and you believe. Just say Jesus, wherever you're at, just say Jesus. I believe you. Jesus, I repent. That's a kind of a scary word. It just means I changed my mind. I I turned my direction and I follow you. I believe you are who you said that you are. And today I choose to follow you. Use my life today. I'm yours. I'm yours, Jesus. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 For a conference, we love you guys so much. What an honor to get to come and open up God's word with you. Be strong and very courageous. Jesus has never left you and he'll never forsake you. This too shall pass. The best really is yet to come. I love you and I'll see you soon. God bless. Awesome. For our conference, what we want you to do is this. If you got something out of Pastor Rich's message, we want to hear about it in the chat. We want to hear about the, me- the, the, the transformation power that the Holy Spirit was speaking through his words. We want to hear about your testimony. So get in the chat. Tell us what you got out of the message this evening. Also, if you made a response to that salvation call right there, we're going to put something right up there at the screen. You can text Forward Con at 313131. Again, that's 313131. Yeah, and Pastor Rich has some amazing resources to help you on your journey with God. And we want, we, want to, we want you to go and check them out. So go on Amazon Prime, Barnes & Nobles, and you can find his books, Friend of Sinners and Sandcastle Kings. And these are resources that will help you in your life and in your walk with God. Hey, but while you're doing all that, don't log out just yet. I, I, I know you want to have a party because this is all fun and all. But we have our first four requests coming up right here. And also, with that being said, if you, I know every year we got some good looking merch. So if you download the Forward Conference app, then we got on there where you can purchase merch right there. Cause each year it gets flyer and flyer and flyer and flyer. I'm about to start flying up in here, red bull wings over here. So, and here we go. So what we want to do is we're going to put the chat up on the screen. And before we get to our four request clue, we want to announce the winner of the Nintendo Switch. Nintendo for, Switch? Come on. I thought I, I want to win. Hold up So now. we're looking for Ruby Bolanos to get up in the chat. You have Ruby. 30 seconds. Ruby Bolanos, get up in the chat. You are the winner of the Nintendo Switch for Forward Reimagine oh, 2020. Ruby, Ruby we're looking surprise. for your name. Here we go. Ruby Bolanos. Ruby Bolanos. I'm taking the Nintendo Switch Ruby, myself. where you at? Do we see her? Do we see her? Ruby. Where you at? Where you at, girl? Have we seen Ruby Bolanos yet? All right. Wait. We're going to give her five seconds. Five more seconds. Five, four, four three, three, two, one. All right. Our next winner is Jocelyn Nivas. Jocelyn, Jocelyn Nivas. Jocelyn, where you at? Come on. Where are you at? Jocelyn. It's going to be all mine. Here we go. Jocelyn Nevas. Just give her about 10 more seconds to get in there. Count them down. Count them down. Five more seconds. Five, four, four three, three, two, one. one. All right, our last one is Deborah Kendrick. Deborah, Deborah Kendrick, Kendrick. Where are you? Deborah Kendrick, this is your Come. Nintendo Switch. You just got to claim it. Come on, where are you at? You just got to claim it. How do you not want a Nintendo Switch? Put your name in there. Where, where, where are you at? We got Joc- actually Jocelyn was here. here she is. We caught you, Jocelyn. Jocelyn Nevas, we are so proud of you. We'll be sending that Nintendo Switch you your way. Could have been my Nintendo Switch though. Come on, it was but. almost ours. We were about to take it. All right, for our conference, we want to remind you our next session is tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, 12 p.m. Pacific. Make sure you set your alarm, get ready to watch it because we are up. just starting Wake out. Up. Don't leave yet because we have our first four request clue. Check out this video.